afternoon. I'm Hidalgo County Judge Richard F. Cortez. I am the chairman of Hidalgo County Drainage District Number 1. Today's meeting is being conducted within the parameters of Governor Abbott's suspension of certain open meeting law requirements to the extent necessary to allow for telephonic and video conference meetings in response to this COVID-19 matter. Notice that this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Zoom software and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. This meeting is being broadcast live online. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be made available to the public at a later date. The time now is 1.47. I call the meeting to order. We'll begin with a roll call to establish quorum. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Would you please lead us in prayer? Yes, sir, Judge, good afternoon. Judge Commissioners, everyone. Hyman. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Father God, we seek your clarity and your peace over all that is occurring in our country. We know that you are with us and for us as we gather to seek your counsel. We continue to pray for the judge and for commissioners that you have appointed to lead this great county of ours. We pray for our mayors, school board members, city council, police chiefs, district attorney, sheriff, judges, and all who serve our local community. Strengthen them with the wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens they carry. May they manage their teams and projects with love, keep their heads pure and their eyes turned towards your face as they work in the best interest of the people they are called to serve. We continue to pray for the first responders and their families. We lift them up to you, Father God. We ask your grace, love, and wisdom be granted to the doctors and nurses dealing with the ill. We ask that your hand of peace and comfort over them and their families. We lift up to you all those that are battling illnesses. We ask for your healing hand over them. Provide their families with peace that only you can bring through your son, Jesus. We praise you for the healing that has come through you. We pray for strength over all that have lost, for all that have lost someone. May God's strength carry through them all and his grace, love, and mercy be over them. Heavenly Father, you bless us with many relationships and you invite us into the community of your sons and daughters who have been redeemed by your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to love our neighbors with charity, kindness, compassion, and mercy, just as you have loved us. In all our relationships and all that we do, say may we always seek to bring you honor and glory. Scripture reminds us that we, the more we seek you, the more we will find you. May we seek you in everything we do and may we work as if we are working for you, Lord. Lead us surrender hearts to the path of your peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do we have anyone sign up for open forum? No, sir. Yes. First, we have Elizabeth Rodriguez. Judge, my apologies, we do. Okay. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Rodriguez, and I'm the farm worker justice advocate at Lupe. Uh, for, I also want to mention that uh, I am a graduate of UTRGB with a bachelor's in social work and a minor in anthropology. Um, I want, I'm here to talk about today about the, the drainage issues and the infrastructure issues that we're having all across the valley. Um, I had, there was a group of farm workers that are going to join me today, but unfortunately, um, I travel across, all across Hidalgo County, and I've been able to see the devastation that has occurred all across the valley. Um, I know that it's a difficult time for everybody living in the valley with the uh, tremendous amount of rain that we've had, and we don't know, we're currently in a hurricane season, we don't know how much more rain we're going to be expecting this season. Um, I think that it's, it is vitally important that we, could, we begin to prepare for these issues that we're having. Um, the rain is not just damaging property, but it's also damaging the streets. There's huge potholes. I live, I live in Precinct 3, and, and the streets are being completely devastated with the rain. It, it's really hard to get around. Uh, a lot of the farm workers live in rural areas. They also live in RV parks. A lot of the RV parks are designated uh, private property, um, but the owners of, of that property, have, have, uh, they have dirt streets. Um, there, like I said, there's a lot of devastation all across the valley for a lot of people. Um, 
I'm here to ask, you know, that, that, that we begin to advocate for more funds for infrastructure. The valley's growing at an immense rate and progress is coming at a cost. Areas that did not flood before are flooding now. And as we're building properties, as we're building new buildings that, that are popping up every day, those other buildings or, or previous uh, properties that, that had already been established, people that have been living in their homes for decades are now getting flooded. Now they're the ones that, that are suffering um, at the cost of, of the infrastructure that's not completely focusing on them. Uh, during m my um, studies, I studied a lot about the border wall and I One know minute. that uh, anthropologists um, did say that, that the border wall was gonna come at a cost to us. It's part of the flooding. We need to focus on our streets. We need to focus on the community. And, and that's the message that I wanna bring here today, that um, as we grow and as we're progressing, that we, that, you know, that we think of uh, everybody in general. You know, uh, make sure that we protect the residents that have been here for many uh, years, as long as the new, the new streets, the new neighborhoods that are popping up as well. And uh, that's the only message that I'm, I'm here to bring today to all of the commissioners, and, and thank you so much for your time. Is there anyone else? Yes, yes next we have Myra Baker. Good afternoon, I'm Myra Baker. I live at 516 South Glasscock Boulevard, technically Alton, but I'm on the Hidalgo County side. I've lived in my residence for 28 years and never had flooding until a man across the road from me with 22 acres was allowed to fill in a flood zone and there, thereby flooding everybody on the east side. We need help. We've asked for barricades. They come. Nobody mans them, so people are still flying by. The road is completely torn up. Even when we had the pumper trucks, which have ceased, even though we were promised last Friday they would be back, there's nobody out there to protect these men that are standing out there in the road trying to help us, trying to pump out the water. Barricades do no good in the valley because nobody pays attention of, to them because nobody's gotten hurt. And that's gonna happen because we have large chunks gone out of the road already. The water developed a whirlpool, went underground, under the road, and proceeded to fill up to the north of my neighbor who's gonna speak next which allows everything to come our way. We've had to remove animals. Nobody has their cattle, their horses, or any of their animals out there because you can't have horses and cows standing in water for over a month. Something needs to be done. I called when this man first started filling the uh, zone in. Nothing was done. I was told nothing could be done. And now the city of Alton has a big problem, as do we. We would really like some help. We need some trucks to pump this water out. We need somebody to uh, patrol to stop these people that don't need to be going up and down our road, going up and down our road. We'd appreciate some help out there. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Maria Alicia Garcia. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Alicia Garcia. And I just want to share with you all uh, two points. One is covering uh, what my neighbor on Glasscock Road shared about this uh, man across my house with 20 some acres, 22, 23 acres, uh, being allowed back in December 2020 to bring hundreds of uh, truckloads of caliche. And if you all know caliche and water and being pounded, it's um, a cement like for a swimming pool. So come rain, what will happen? Only common sense will tell you that that water won't be uh, absorbed any longer with caliche being pounded and water. It'll go over the street. I called Channel 5 and they responded and they waited there till 7 p.m. to see if anybody would rescue us um, and nobody came. So they aired it and um, and it shows with their cameras, not mine, but it shows where the water, it's not rainwater. This is water coming from those acres, crossing over the street, just on my property, 
and this was 24-7 for days and days and days. Um, today, well, probably most of you have gone on vacation and had great pictures on Facebook that I see. Uh, I want you to know that today marks 21 days that we're still in water. I have two babies and my whole family. Uh, if any of you are animal lovers, my horses have been 24-7 with their hooves and their legs in water and no rescue. We called Cowboy from County, Hidalgo County, and he told us that he couldn't help us because they were, you know, full. So we ventured around, looked, and finally we found one a couple of days ago. We don't know the future are of our horses, and I know that if there's water one over minute over 12 to 48 hours in wood or plywood, which the water is on our, on our floor for 21 days today, there is already black mold growing. That's what we're breathing. So while you're on vacation and having beautiful pictures that I see, and I, I'm happy for you, I want you to know that's what we are living and no one's paying attention to us. Um, that's basically what I wanted to share. Somebody please help us, I beg you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next up, we have Ms. Fern McClurdy. Yes, I wasn't gonna speak in drainage, but the first thing, our drainage department needs to be here in the courtroom so that these people can show the pictures of the water in their homes, in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, in the kitchen. Uh, I ask if they could be able to show the pictures over there in that department uh, to put it out so the public and the department heads could see, oh no, we couldn't possibly do that. As much money as the taxpayers pay for all these cameras and everyone to see, they should be able to bring a picture in and you put it up on that camera so everyone in the county can see what a good job y'all are doing. So uh, again, um, the people need to be able to see the flooding, you need to see the flooding, but the drainage district, most of all, needs to be here so that they can show, if nothing else, make them feel a little better. They're losing everything, they're losing their animals. And next will be their homes, while y'all are sitting in your nice homes that are not wet and having so much fun and everything, these people are suffering. So, county judge, we would like your help on this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That is it for a public forum. Judge. Is that it? I'm going to ask that we recess drainage district and go to uh, regular commission report for pleasure and prayer, and then we can come back to drainage. Okay, may I have a motion to recess our meeting for the so, drainage so district? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. About 10 seconds, Judge, please. Well, good afternoon. I'm Hidalgo County Judge Richard F. Cortez. Today's commissioner's court meeting is being conducted within the parameters of Governor Abbott's suspension of certain open meeting law requirements to the extent necessary to allow for telephonic and video conference meetings in response to this COVID-19 matter. Notice that this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The court is meeting by the use of Zoom's software and telephone transmission which allows for two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. This meeting is being broadcast live and online. A recording of the meeting is being made and will be made available to the public at a later date. The time now is 2 p.m. and I call the meeting to order. We'll begin with a roll call to establish quorum. David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Eddie Cantu, Precinct 2. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. And I'm Richard Cortez, County Judge. That constitutes a quorum. As is customary to have a veteran uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, today we have Petty Officer Second Class, Mr. Nathan Science. He lives in Mission. He served the U.S. Navy from 2000, the year 2000 to 2008, received numerous medals for, for good conduct and service to our country, and we thank him for that service. Would you please lead us in prayer? I mean, in the pledge, excuse me. Yes, sir, thank you all for having me. Uh, attention to the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Thank you very much, Nathan. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you, sir. Y'all have a good day. We also have the very honorable Justice Nora Linda Longoria. She is the Justice for the 13th Court of Appeal, place two. She will be leading us in today's prayer. Madam Justice. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Dear Lord, we ask that you guide us today as we gather for Commissioner's Court. Please help us to make decisions that will improve the well-being of our community. We place our faith in your hands, and we ask that you be with those who are currently battling this virus. We ask you for mercy with regard to this pandemic. Please continue watching over our essential workers and bless and protect our school children from all variants as they start this new school year. We ask that you be with all those who need your help during these difficult times. Lord, bless our county judge and our county commissioners with continued wisdom and grace so that they may guide the people of Hidalgo County. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Madam Justice. May I have a motion to recess the Commissioner's Court meeting to return so to the training Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We now reopen our uh, drainage district meeting. May I have a motion to do so, please? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. I believe the next item was the approval of the consent agenda. Yes, sir, Judge, the consent agenda, we have just the normal operating matters. Uh, everything's in order. We do recommend approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, Thank you, sir. 5A, please. 5A, discussion and update on Texas Water Development Board Region 15, Lower Rio Grande Regional Flood Planning Group. I'll turn it over to Mr. Salazar, who's uh, managing this effort. Good afternoon, uh, Judge and Commissioners. Hi, Ms. Alasal, for the record. Judge and Commissioner, this afternoon, I just wanted to provide a brief update to the board on the Region 15 Regional Flood Planning Group and our progress. Um, as you know, the Drainage District serves as the sponsor for the Region 15, uh, Texas Water Development Board Region 15 Planning Group. In May, the board uh, ranked half in associates, and we have since executed our agreement with Hacking Associates. They are now serving as the technical consultant to lead these efforts for the Water Development Board Region 15 group. Um, I wanted to advise the board that the um, we have launched our website for our Region 15. Uh, we wanna encourage anyone that is interested to please log on and they can follow, um, learn more about Region 15 and our mission. The web address is www region15lrg.org. Um, with that said, I wanted to introduce our technical consultant project manager from Happen Associates, Ms. Christina Leal, to brief you all a little bit about their efforts that encompasses, like I said, region 15, uh, 14 counties in our region. So, Ms. Leal? You're on mute, ma'am. No, we cannot hear you. While they're working that up, Judge, I just want to say that Region 15, the drainage district, and serving as our uh, our agents are essentially our administrators have done an excellent job of, of moving this this organization forward. We're a sub, subdivision of the Water Development Board and working with respect to creating a regional plan for flood studies. This will expand into general land office studies and hopefully some sort of a floodplain uh, drainage master drainage plan for the state of Texas. So I want to thank Jaime and, and the staff over there at the drainage district for all the work that they're doing and obviously half associates for uh, joining. We have, a, we have a very aggressive timeline. We have about a year and a, a few months to really put this entire plan together. Uh, so I know that we're gonna be moving on this very, very quickly. We just uh, launched the, the website to provide public information. I encourage everybody to go out there and take a look at it. 
uh, but it, it is something we'll be aggressively um, moving forward. So you'll be hearing a lot about this over the next year. Thank you for the update, uh, Commissioner. Are we ready, Jaime? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. So thank you, uh, Commissioner. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Judge. I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Christina Liel, and as Jaime says, uh, I am a project manager at Half Associates, and I am the project manager for the Region 15 Regional Flood Planning Group. And I want to thank you uh, for the opportunity to um, have me here and just personally invite all of you and all the public to our virtual pre-planning meeting that's happening via Zoom tomorrow at 3.30. Uh, you can find that uh, Zoom link on the Region 15 website. And uh, just to summarize what the Commissioner said, you know, this is a plan. It's fashioned similar to the uh, state water plan where you where the state plans for the water supply. Well, this will focus on flooding needs for the state. And we're looking at it on a watershed basis. So our region, like Jaime said, is 14 counties. Uh, and it's really the same watershed. So we can get together and look at our existing policies, our existing practices, where are the needs, where are our problems, and develop strategies, develop uh, ID, ID identify where more study is needed, identify where funding is needed, um, and just develop a plan to address flooding in the future. I think ultimately this will help prioritize projects uh, throughout the state of Texas and specifically in our region that, that uh, either get state funding or you know, some sort of specific uh, plan of action as we move forward. So thank you to Half Associates, to Christina, again for Jaime administering the, uh, you know, that on behalf of the entire Region 15 flood planning group. Thank you, Christina. Uh, as mentioned, judging commissioners, tomorrow is our first pre-planning meeting agenda and the information can be found on the Region 15 website, www.region15lrg.org. Thank you. Any questions from the board? If not, then I'm done, Judge and Commissioner. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item, 5B. Yes, sir. 5B, consideration of possible action to adopt a plan of finance to issue the remaining authorized but unissued bonds from the 2018 bond referendum. We have Mr. Uh, Hinojosa here from Estrada Hinojosa, our financial advisor, uh, to make a presentation, to uh, present uh, to the board where we are with our current finance and, and um, possible options uh, on uh, the sale of the rest of the bonds to, to finish off our 2018 bond program uh, project. So, uh, Noe, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank uh, no, you. Noe Nojoso with the Stroy Nojoso Company, uh, uh, financial advisors to the district. With me is uh, Bobby Villarreal, who you all know, and Mike Garcia in our Dallas office coming with me so that you can learn a, a few things here. Uh, but anyway, it's good to see you all in this very tough times and challenging times all across Texas for that matter. Well, what's before you is a brief presentation on the fact that if you recall back in 2018, 18, you passed a bond referendum for drainage improvements about $190 million, of which as of today, you have sold about 106. Uh, most recently, you sold about $22 million in change to the Water Dome Board at a 0% rate. Along with that was some grant money that I think you all were very instrumental in, in, in working through this whole process. So there's at least about $30 million that are in the coffers from those bond and grant proceeds that were basically closed about a month ago or so. What we're talking about now is what we call in our business what's been authorized by the voters through a referendum and you have yet to sell. So if you go back to 2018, you told voters, if you give us the authority to sell about $190 million, we promise not to raise more than three cents in taxes. So on page two, as you can see there, you'll find that what you don't see there is what was the tax rate was in 2018, but just a refresher. Back in 2018, the tax rate on the top right-hand corner, there's a breakdown of MNO and INS, total tax rate, TAV, and the levy. 
Today, in 2021, you're about <coughs> 0.1026. That's what is collected by this district from taxpayers countywide. And you collect that tax rate from a TAV of about $38.3 billion. In 18, your values were about $33 billion. In 22, the year that you're about to get into and adopt a budget for, the expected values are about $43 billion. So literally, in the last four years, you have had a growth of about 30% in values from where you were when the election took place for that referendum. And that's about a 7.5% increase year after year after year, for that matter, in values. So when there's values, there are challenges. Um, and, and that's, I guess, what this is about. It's about whether you consider important at this point to sell about $84 million of remaining balance in anticipation of other things going on in the marketplace. You've heard about inflation being an issue with people out there that, so for some of you who are in the development uh, of um, whether you're just purchasing property or uh, building real property, whether it's multifamily or single family, the cost on the raw materials is, is going up. Uh, uh, at the same time on interest rates, rates have been so depressed. There's talked about uh, bringing in more stimulus money. There's fear that if you bring stimulus money, that's gonna cause for projects to be more expensive, interest rates to rise. Um, today, if, if you were to go to the market and try to sell what is, is still a remaining balance of being sold, we think you're probably gonna get rates of south of 2% or a hair over 2%. Can't tell you what this could be next this time next year. Uh, but what I can tell you is today, it, they're pretty attractive rates. And, and basically, what we're sharing here with you today is that if you're aware that in this drainage district, uh, the circumstances of today with the drainage district is that you need more than less. And thus, if you can borrow this money, you can afford it to fall within the three cents that you were given permission to go out and, and, and sell, why not? So as you can see on page uh, four, uh, just pretty, there's a big graph and uh, there's a green line and a blue line. And basically that's a, a 20 year graph, 21 year graph of what interest rates are doing today. And I would tell you that today interest rates are probably, uh, as you can see, at a, a 20 year low uh, and thus, it's a pretty compelling picture of, of what are we doing. Uh, I think we had the conversation, commissioners uh, Fuentes and Torres, about this when, when we visited on this matter. And uh, I think if you were to consider selling these bonds, there are four issues that you must be aware of. That's on page five. And that is thinking whether you think is valuable to mitigate that interest rate exposure, selling today versus later. And because of the fact that, that the drainage district is not being told by your staff, um, you know, you're doing projects and you're not doing them fast enough. I mean, I, uh, some of us, if you do, uh, like I just moved offices in Dallas and just buying a refrigerator is taking me about six months to get the refrigerator into our office, things are not being moved fast enough. And I guess uh, if in fact you borrow 84 million, conceivably you have to take into account that the IRS does not permit you to sell bonds, and if you don't spend your money in three years, they'll come and penalize you. They make those bonds that you sold tax exempt into taxable. So we talked about whether out of the 84 million, whether you all felt like maybe some of it should be sold tax exempt versus taxable in an attempt to give you the optimal flexibility. So along with, the, with that concern, there's also talk about the district being able to reclaim water that comes into your canals, into your retaining ponds, and sell that water for purposes of, of uh, you know, providing water uh, rights to, to other communities along the valley and, and, and monetize that sale. And if you monetize that, whether you sell it to a private entity or a public entity, then the district becomes potentially a revenue generator. And if you do that, the IRS also comes into play. So uh, <clears throat> talking to bond counsel earlier, Chief Ramirez on that, you know, he felt like, hey, 
those are two considerations that, that are valued. You think about maybe splitting the sale into tax, tax exempt and, tax, and taxable. So then the question becomes, and this is more of a policy issue that we didn't want to presume that we had the right to, uh, to on your behalf, to, 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 uh, to go out and structure this financing. You can sell it two ways. We believe that if you sell, by the time you're done with $190 million in sale, if you sell those bonds today, the impact on tax rate since the time you started this pro program will be one cent, 1.1 cents, not three cents. But if in fact you feel like going down the road, you're gonna bring another referendum, the question you have to ask yourself is, do you wanna position yourself to raising up to the three cents so that you can accelerate your payments on the expensive loan, which is a taxable loan, so that when you call a referendum two or three years down the road and you bring another referendum to address or attempt to address the greater needs, that then the impact on the tax rate is not gonna be another three cents. So it's all a matter of structure. It's kind of like you and I when applying for a mortgage. If you do a 30-year mortgage, you can live with it, you have disposable income. If you accelerate it, then you have you put more pressure on the disposable income. And, and what you're doing here is not necessarily getting rid of your disposable income, it's taking advantage of the fact that you have the green light to go up to three cents, or that was a presumption that you could go up to three cents. If you'd sell debt the way you've always sold your debt, 25 years, level on annual payments, the impact will be 1.1 cents. But if you accelerate it, we can structure in such a way that for the next three years, you can be at three cents and then drop. So if you don't, if you have a voter referendum in 2024, just to say a number. But why, why, would you, why would you want to accelerate it? Again, you got two pieces of debt. One is tax exempt, the other one is taxable. The taxable is gonna cost you more money. So in an attempt to reduce the borrowing cost, you do, you can do that. We didn't want to presume that you should do that. We wanted to presume that, hey, here are the two options, it's up to you. The way I think the staff and ourselves discussed this matter, we felt compelled to tell you, but we didn't feel compelled to give you a recommendation on it. We think that is your call either way. Uh, at the end of the day, in three years from now, say that you have another $200 million referendum, just to say a number, to do the Raymond Bill drain to other, other projects. At that time, conceivably you may have to say to the voters, I'm gonna need, think, two cents or three cents. And we think that if you were to do the impact, the increase today, then you wouldn't have that impact. You follow me? I, I think I do. That's 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 what I'm trying to do is to follow you. But, you know, you have we have we're creating a long-term asset. And yep. You just told us in the last how many years we grew thirty percent in uh, yeah from thirty-three billion to forty-three billion. Yes, sir. Okay. So so in, so in essence, rightly so, the, the growth and the benefit is going to tax the people that joined the party later after it's done. So. I'm for long-term financing when you're creating long-term assets so that you spread the cost among the people that are gonna use it. Mm -hmm. So the only reason for me to play with the timing is simply a simple math, simply what's cost less. Because philosophically, you wanna bring in as many people as you can, because why would you have this generation pay for something that two generations later will benefit Well, what we paid for it? Very good point, keep in mind that that tax rate increase is only gonna help you administratively if you pass a referendum then. If it fails, the tax rate will come down to lower levels than what it is today. So it's all about managing your expectations. It's where you are today and where you think you may need to be in the future. Is your call and very defensible either way, Jay. I think well, if you, you go ahead. The other question, and, and I haven't asked, I don't know if you're the appropriate person to Please. ask, but I've been meaning to ask. You know, there's a cost to retaining or capturing the water that we're gonna resell. Mm -hmm. And we've made an analysis to what that cost is compared to what we think we can sell it for. I, I would, uh, I think Raul might be able to answer this just a little bit more clearly, but we don't have that because we don't have the ability to know whether we can sell it or not. 
Uh, at this point in time, I think with respect to the pres presentation that's being made before us right now is, you know, we have to consider whether we want to issue this last tranche of, of money. Uh, interest rates are extremely low. There's talks about inflation. There's a possibility that interest rates could go up higher. When we made the $190 million bond sale, we, we said that we would only raise taxes up to three, three cents um, to, to borrow all of that money. But because of our 0% interest loan with Texas Water Development Board, because interest rate rates were low in the first tranche, and then because of the interest rate market as it is right now, it looks like if we issue all of these bonds up to the 190 million, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we had projected that we would be under two cents total valuation, total tax increase, correct? It's actually more like 1.1 but, but, cents. But the, so, var but the variable so, is, can you expend it within the three year period? That's exactly okay. right. Well, right now, well, material, material, they're shorted, so you ordered a refrigerator, that, took you eight months <coughs> to get I think we need to clarify that. There's only, it's only a three year if you do uh, tax exempt. Exactly. If you do taxable bonds, which I would recommend that we do for a couple of reasons, or at least we split it between the tax exempt on the projects we know that we can complete in three years. The other thing is that we need to be mindful, like he said, about anything that generates revenue in the future cannot be tax exempt. So if we're attaching any of this money to the main drain that's going to be part of the reclamation project, we have to be very careful about using tax exempt bond money. You don't need an answer today because there's still a lot of analysis. Yeah, to do. Uh, well, let me say this: well, we need guidance. That's what we need. Yeah. In that, in that, if we, if you adopt this plan of finance, this is a, this is a very active. Is that me or is somebody else? That's true. Uh huh. It's true. Okay. Uh, this is a very active, uh, active, active process. Today is is, is July, what is it, 27th? Uh, if we sell these bonds, we're looking at September 13th. We got rating presentations. If you proceed to to, to adopt a, let's go ahead and do this sale. We got September 13th for sale and closing October 14th. Uh, so that's where we are. That we're trying to be too is the fact that you have to set the tax rate for next year. So you're setting the tax rate on or about mid-September, which is the time that we sell these bonds. But, yeah. but, but, but you have you had projects, what, 38, 30, uh, 37? How, what were the total projects for the for training? What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand. How many bond projects? Okay, Society. those were already funded. Some. What's left is the remaining 80, 84. 84 so, million. So, Judge Commissioners, yes, it was 37 projects. That they are all. All this funding is for all these projects to be funded, and they are all moving projects right now. We have about half of them under construction and phases, or some are completed, some are about to go out of construction. A lot of them are at permitting stages with the IBWC. A lot of them are in acquisition. We got about 400 parcels that we're acquiring. A lot of it's tied into that fifth project that we couldn't move forward to. We had the environmental in place. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. Um, so the, all that is ongoing. To answer your question, Judge, yes, the, the 190 will fund the identified projects that we have within the 2018 bond referendum that was passed. Out of that, 50 million drains into the uh, main drain and the remaining 135 million drains into the IBWC floodway or the uh, Rio Grande River or the Rio Colorado, which is not part of the main drain, going back to what Commissioner Fuentes mentioned earlier, at least 50 million would have to be taxable because we don't want that issue later coming up that we sold bonds that were not tax examined. Now we're gonna have a possible uh, scenario where we're generating funds off the the main drain water that's going into the reclamation project. So we've got that broken down already, split up, and that's why Commissioner Fuentes was mentioning we could do the remainder, 50 million in, in taxable, and then the other 30 million uh, tax exempt, which we believe we could put those projects out within three years in the tax exempt. Uh, you know, I will also point out that 25 million of this money uh, is, 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 is uh, identified for long-term projects though. As you know, the Rainbow Drain and the, and the Reclamation Project are long-term projects. So, uh, you know, those are gonna be ongoing because of the magnitude of the project and the cost of it. But be that as it may, yes, sir. Just to answer your question, Judge, we do have the funding identified. All the projects will get constructed for the 2018 bond referendum. They were identified the 2018 bond referendum. Yes, the projects are there. They need funding. The question is, do we wait for funding them next year or shall we do it today? 
not knowing what our recommendation here from the district would be that we go ahead and take advantage of, of the market and talking with our CFO and, and, and we would recommend that we go out structure in a way for the 50 to be taxable the other one non-taxable uh, the remaining 80 that we have and, and, and continue to push our projects forward to get them out um, to construction as soon as possible obviously we've we've been having a very wet year and we'll continue to have these it doesn't appear to be slowing down so we want to get these projects activated as soon as possible uh, to get them in the ground so that would be our recommendation did, did you overfund or underfund the previous projects that were financed through these bonds that we've already completed or in process of completing I think budget wise that Raul can tell you but I think we've been pretty much on target with all of our so none of the money that we're going to use we're going to have to fill the hole that that there was that we're missing because we under budgeted we, we no, this everything that I have so well, far with a very blessed judge we were very very um, detail oriented in our estimates we've been very very assertive in how we present our projects with our engineers we keep them real tight we've been following our specifications not other specifications so that has helped us tremendously in keeping our projects at budget or under budget so far everything has come in very very good um, I hopefully can continue that trend sir but obviously I can't control the market and how things are changing but as of right now we are we're doing well we're doing very well with the projects that are out for construction um, as I said we've been very hands-on with our engineers in managing that effort over the last three years you can imagine the changes that have taken place especially last year in cost but so far the bids that we just received this last week were under the estimate that we had for the project okay. by about 300,000 one of them that I can recall off the top of my head so I think we're doing a great job here. My staff is doing a great job of making sure we keep everything at, at, at budget or under budget. But then again, sir, we don't control the market. You know, so yes, sir, to answer your question, right now everything yeah, so has been hit. I think that the way we're splitting it between tax exempt and taxable gives us a flexibility that we're not under the three year crunch on every single project. We have projects that are gonna extend past three years. We already know that. Uh, they've already done the analysis to separate those estimates. I think taking advantage of market and more, more, more than anything, judges, we'll, we'll have issued all of these bonds and only have raised taxes by just over one penny when we made a commitment to keep it under three. Uh, I think that that shows that we were fiscally responsible and that we did things and took advantage of every financing opportunity to do this at a minimal cost. Uh, so to reduce the tax expectation from three cents down to almost one is and get all of these bonds issued at that rate judge I think I think it's uh, something we need to, need to take advantage of I would make the recommendation I would make the motion that we approve uh, moving forward with the presentation as as uh, Mr. Sassin broke that uh, this tranche of money between tax exempt and taxable you have to get the exact figures from him Raul I don't know if you want to state what those numbers are or if you have that Nori yeah, we have that. It's on page um, uh, page six, seven, six. And we'll reconfirm that, uh, yeah. Judge and Commissioners, with Noe. We will make sure that we have that number tied down correctly. Yep. What is yep. what would be taxable or not? But that's the general number that would be. Uh, the, the next sale would be fifty million taxable, and then the balance is left of the eighty-two, which is about thirty something, will be non-taxable, sir. You have, and then you we have, will be yeah, you in have compliance for any future issues that may come up uh, with our reclamation projects. Sir. Mr. Ramirez, is there a specific way to, that motion needs to be made? So you're talking about a 25% 20, a 20, basis points difference in, in the rate? Are, yeah, are, you asking, are you asking my counsel? Yes, sir. I was asking if there was any specific way that you needed that recommendation or that motion to be made. No, no specific way. So I just make a motion as to move forward as presented through the plan of finance that was presented today by Mr. Hinojosa and recommended by the drainage district. I have a sec, I'll make a second and a, and a, and a comment. I, I think you mentioned that there was some question or issue with respect to setting ourselves up for the future. Yes. And I can only speak for myself, but I want to be set up for the future because if the rains continue the way they've been this summer, uh, if that continues, then we need to do something in the future obviously we are doing something now but it takes time to get projects completed but i do want to be prepared for um whether it's 2024 or whenever we're going to need to go out for 
additional bond cargoes. Yeah. Well, again, the option, the guidance we were, I was seeking, in addition to selling whether it's taxable or tax exempt, is whether you want to just levy the one penny one, 1, 1.1 pennies, or go up to the three cents. It was actually suggested to me on my way out <laughs> yesterday, when we just split the difference and go to two cents. I'd rather, I guess, come to you all separately and apart, see how you feel of whether you should go, just leave it at one pennies, or go to three, or go to two. I believe, knowing full well, that you have greater needs as you continue to grow, that you're gonna be better positioned, a somewhat better position, in telling the public, hey, this is what we did, instead of going to three, we went to one, or we went to two, we did what we had to do, now I need your help again. But a lot of times, you know, three years from now, those projects, this project needs, not knowing what inflation could do, it could be a $200 million loan or 300 or whomever, or whatever, but, you know. But, but I think the point needs to be made that the reason we would accelerate the payments is to create the capacity. To, to create capacity. In the future. Yeah. What we did as far as issuing these bonds at this rate at almost one, one penny, I think is, is one thing. But the second thing is if we decide to accelerate to create more capacity later, I agree with you. Because I still think that we're well under our commitment, you know, of the three pennies. Uh, and I think that we'll be able to provide a, an opportunity in the future to keep more projects going because I know that we're going to need them. I'm, I'm in agreement with you on, on that. Yeah, I, I um, also agree with Commissioner Cantua. In my area, we have a very large issue with flooding. And a lot of our areas, uh, our residents also say that they didn't flood before. But because of the Bro. improvements of other properties, the water is going obviously somewhere else and we need to find solutions uh, for this and obviously everything takes money to do so I know that uh, I'm gonna be uh, in the same uh, having the same issues as I'm needing money to be able to address those issues if I, if I can qu quickly get a statistic now will do you do you have the amount of rain that we've had especially in the precinct one and precinct three areas that have been heavily hit with rain this summer since May? Uh, the totals, I don't have that really available, uh, Commissioner, but I mean, I know we've had register in the last rain events three to four inches each one just in the last two alone and we were in the last month. So I think we, I would were, say at, we, we were at 36 <laughs> inches before the last three storms. So we're probably at yeah. 45 inches. I mean, that's unheard of. I, I think I'm clear on most of everything, knowing. Yeah. But, Help me understand capacity. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that, that I've quite got that yet. Yeah, if you go over to page uh, nine, I believe, there's a graph. And on that page nine, you're gonna see a red line. That red line is, is your tax levy for the INS tax rate you currently levy. Your bars, are your annual payments. So if you're in 2020, your payments are shy of 20 million. In 21, they're actually a little lower than, 20, than the previous year. But then in 22, we would accelerate, that's a green bar. Your taxable loan, which is the most expensive loan, we, we take that payment from about 19 million to 32 million for three years. So that in 24, you call an election, if you so feel like there are needs then, and the capacity is literally embedded in the difference between the red line and the bars. So at that point in 25, if you sell bonds in 24 or sell bonds in 25, you're gonna try to fill that difference to the tax levy. Very likely, your tax levy, the red line, it's gonna to continue to move up because your property values are moving up. I was just talking to Ken Benson, a friend of mine in DC, and he was saying, I was just in Mission not long ago, and he says, there's growth everywhere. Well, the more you pave, the more water has to find a way to run to. And you've seen that. Uh, so I guess to us, the rate agencies are gonna say, we want you to tell us what your plans are today, but it's not a, unusual now, especially for fast growing counties to give 10 year plans. But we don't have a 10 year plan. What we try to do for the most part 
and see if we can squeeze a little bit more money from the from the state by getting grants or for the feds, right? So we, we you've been very prudent about not accessing the markets. So again, the capacity is embedded on that on that those yeah, bar but, drops. But your capacity is increased yeah. by two things: yes. reduction in reduction in principal and added taxable value. The capacity is created by you accelerating your principal payment, making payments higher, and the increase so of property values. Your capacity to pay. That's right. The capacity to, to the capacity to your afford capacity to do more projects. Capacity to pay gives you capacity to borrow. Bingo. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which has to do with your disposable income illustration that I gave you yesterday, um, earlier. Okay. So, but well, I. I have a lot of confidence in the work that the commissioners have done, and they certainly, we, we have a huge problem with grants. I want to do everything possible to, to get going. Just a real quick approximate answer. It doesn't have to be yeah. definite, but on this page nine, yeah. in 2026, roughly yeah. 2025, we have $20 million more or less of INS payments. Mm -hmm. But the capacity would be near 34, 35. Yeah. So that's about a thirteen, fourteen million dollar <laughs> yeah. difference. Yes, sir. What kind of Capacity. bond issuance would that really equate to? Uh, I would say at least one eighty with no tax rate increase. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to go there. When we did the one hundred ninety million, the first forty we could have done at zero tax rate. Of course, we had a, a, a we had a need of three hundred, and we did one ninety right to kind of. Mm -hmm. Go to the taxpayers and get as much as we could to do as many projects as possible. But we could have done 40. So what you're saying now is that in the future, we may be able to do 180 without raising taxes. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's important to know that because even when we have capacity, we still have to go to the taxpayers and ask for, for permission mm -hmm. as a drainage district. Yep. Um, and also just to, to educate myself and educate the community, we passed a $190 million bond deal. We, 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 we advised the taxpayers that we weren't gonna spend more than three cents. But because we're, even though we're only spending one cent, we cannot go beyond the 190, is that correct? That's right. Okay. I asked that question too. <laughs> <laughs> no, because in normal situations, maybe in the county, we could possibly do different things that we do in the drainage. No question, because the county has a uh, bit more tools to be able to do more things than the district does. But but to be able to say in four years that we could potentially borrow another 150 million plus at no tax rate increase to the I taxpayers, <laughs> I think that that's worth moving forward with this plan. Commissioner Torres, any questions? No, I just want to make sure that the 50 that we do use for any projects that are going to be uh, uh, related to the main drain are taxable so that if it ever does be, be get, it gets deemed as uh, something that we can sell for revenue that we didn't use any non uh, taxable money for that so just to be cognizant of that but I think you all already have those numbers well I know the yeah. I know a few people on this board that will get on our case if we don't <laughs> do it that way and the price that you're paying is 25 basis points no, no uh, that that's our assumptions for running the numbers we think uh, 25 basis points right now are, is our assumption for a higher rate. You should be borrowing 25 basis points lower. So if you go to page eight, and if you look at that column uh, E, I'm saying 241. You should be at 216. And, and the next loan, 244, should be 25 less than 244 in today's market. Between now and September 13th, when we sell those bonds, that's after Labor Day. We expect rates to pick up. So just trying to cover. We, have, we had a motion and a second. There was discussion. Any further discussion? I think, it's, I think you've all done a great job. Thank Kudos you, Judge. You. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Commissioner Noe, thank you. Thank you. If I may, sir, may I move to item 5C? Yes, sir. Thank you. 5C, approval resolution affidavit requesting financial assistance for the Texas Water Development Board for the Rainbow Dream Project and action designating Mr. Rolstein as authorized sig signal, signal of the grant agreement and other necessary documents that apply to the grant and transfer of funds. 
request an approval so we can submit the request uh, to the water available more for those funds. We don't know yet what funds the amount is going to be, so we're going to make a request and they'll respond to it. Will you be coming back later with a number? Yes, sir. Well, as soon as we get it, we'll, we'll for sure present it, sir. Right now, the process is to submit, they'll evaluate, and they'll come back with the number as far as what is allocated. As you know, as the board knows in the past, I think the last uh, award we got from the Water Development Board for the Rainbow Dream was $2 million. We don't know what this was going to be uh yet so we're going to submit it and we'll keep the board updated for sure on on what comes back sir make a motion to approve second we have a motion to second to approve all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carried thank you item d requesting approval to purchase two new uh, uh jd 40, 470g short boom excavator to the district membership with source well cooperative award contract number 03919 excuse me 119 from docket heavy machinery service ltd total amount of 840,000 includes an extended warranty of 60 months 5,000 hours powertrain hydraulic so you can find the review legal review uh, reference procurement number acd 121032 equipment that we had budgeted and we recommend approved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E, request and approval of final on-call professional surveying service agreement, CCD 121 for Gilbert J. Guerra Engineering, DBA Rio Delta Engineering, for Dr. Foundation One Project, Tilted Legal Review, is approved by negotiation by the Board of Directors, 6121. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item F1, request and approval supplement agreement number two to the professional engineering service contract, CCD 119 055 with Javier and Jose Engineering for the project more field inspiration, mile five road through mile six road through reflective vice period of service to end October 1st, 2021. So the legal review and compliance house bill 1295. We're just trying to close out this project. Um, we need till October to finish it up. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, request and approval supplement agreement number two, the work decision number one for the professional engineering service contract, CGD 119 055 Engineering engineering for the project more field inspiration, mile five road through mile six road, reflect the revised period of service to end October 1st, 2021. So we review and compliance house bill 1295. Same as before, just trying to finish out the project. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G1, request and approve to accept bids and award construction contract to the lowest and best bid and meeting all specified requirements, more with LLC. Base bid includes entry number one in the amount of 1394315 cents for RFP number 1881 2101 This is at Chapman, Texas Road, Canton Road, Tower Road, and Iowa Road drainage area improvements. And as recommended by the engineer, Ms. Saliva, from my office, so your legal review and compliance house bill 1295. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, Patricia Tech Loan Code 262031 in the interest of expedited project progress, request an authority approval for drainage district general manager to execute change orders that involve an increase or decrease in the cost of 50000 or less and no event to exceed the change orders. Statutory limits, the original contract price cannot be decreased by 18% or more without the consent of the contractor. Motion so, to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item H1, request an exemption to the requirements, text logo and code 2620248484 for professional engineering services. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. H2, presentation scoring grid of the firm's grade to the district pool of pre qualified professional engineers for the purpose of ranking by the board of directors in connection with professional service for the repair and reconstruction of main flood water channel weir number four, located in Williston County, text required for the accommodation of one. Uh, firms that were ranked ICE Engineering 96, 67, NTEC Civil Engineers 95, and Seguera Engineering 93.33. Does the board swear to rank as stated? So moved. so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item three, pursuing the board's approval, requesting authority for Dr. Engineering 1 to negotiate professional service agreement with the number one ranked firm of ICE Engineering for the provisions of professional service for the repair and reconstruction of Bain Floodwater Channel Weir number four, located in Willis County, Texas, required for Dow County Station number one. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Thank you. Item I-1, requesting approval to reject sole bid received for the project titled Fuel, Gasoline, and Diesel 
Line off highway through RFP number 8021-21-14-0707 ESD. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item I-2, requesting authority to execute 60-day grace period extension as provided in the current agreement for the fuel gasoline diesel on and off highway. We've got Gold Star Petroleum Inc. contract number c 1904807 under the same grace terms and conditions effective July 30th, 2021 through September 28th, 2021, or upon completion of the procurement process for the award of a new contract, whichever comes first and is most advantageous to Dow County Joint District number one. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, discussion and approval of the Dow County District number one. A resolution recognizing the necessity of acquiring easements or right of ways or a fee title in connection with the construction of the Mission McAllen Radio Alternate 2018 Bond Number 25 project in Hidalgo County, Texas. An authorizing the acquisition of said easements or right of way or fee title described in the resolution exhibits thereto by condemnation, eminent domain, or otherwise. Single vote shall apply to all units of the property described in said resolution. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Adam K. Requested approval of final negotiated professional contract number c one with George A. Salazar II, DBA Appraisal Houses as relates to real estate appraisal service on quantitative basis. The Dow County District of One Project is approved and negotiated by the Board of Directors, June 15, 2021. Subject to review and compliance House Bill 495. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item L, request and approval of second amendment addendum to the interlocal agreement by and between Dow County District 1 and Dow County Irrigation District number 16. Previously approved February 9, 2021. Agenda item 79467, subject to final legal review. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, item 6A, acceptance approved work session number one in the amount of 133067 and 38 cents. As submitted by easy engineering through contract CSD 121026 to provide construction show testing services, inspection for the mission McAllen Radio Phase 1 bond repair and project 25, subject to legal review. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. E acceptance approval work session number two in the amount of 1124565 as submitted by B to Z Engineering through contract ACA City 121026 to provide construction material testing for admission lateral phase three 2018 bond project 26. So moved. Subject legal review. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C1, requesting approval of supplement agreement number three to professional engineering service contract CD 1-19-041-0521 with Tennis Infrastructure A for project JO8 drain 2018 bond referendum project 15A to reflect the rice period to end January 31st, 2023. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, request approval of supplement agreement number two to work session number one of the professional service contract CD 1-19-040. 0521 Test Infrastructure Group Inc. for the project JOA during 2018 bond referendum project 15A to reflect the revised period of service to end January 31st, 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Three requests and approval supplement agreement number one to work session number two professional engineering service contract ACDD 1-19-040-0521 with Test Infrastructure Group for the project JOA during 2018 bond referendum project 15A to reflect the revised period of service to end January 31st, 2023. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item Z1, request and approve accept bids in a work construction contract at lowest best bid and meeting all specified requirements on Silas Engineering Manager LLC. The amount of $2,112,581 for RFP number ACD 121023 mss Mission McAllen Radio Alternate Phase 1 2018 Bond Referendum Project 25 and as recommended Project Engineer BDZ Engineering. Let's go 1295. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> D2, pursuant to Government Code 262031 and interest expedited project progress, requesting authority approval with drainage district general manager to execute change orders that involve an increase decrease in cost of 50000 or less in no event to exceed the change orders. Statutory limits, the original contract price may not be decreased by 18% or more by the consent of the contractor. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E1, request and approval, set bids and award construction contract to the lowest and best bidder, bidder, meeting all specified requirements, Science Brothers Construction, LLC, 
in the amount of two million three ninety eight three eighty one. For our fee number eight three one twenty one zero two seven zero seven fourteen. National lateral phase three proposed winding ditch from Benson Palm Drive to West Wagon City two subdivision twenty eighteen bond referendum project twenty six. As recommended, project engineer LNG Engineering subject legal review and compliance house bill twelve ninety five. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Pursuant to Texas Loan Code 262031 and interest to expediting the pro project's progress, request an authority approval for drain district government manager to execute change orders to that involve an increase or decrease in cost of 50000 or less and all that exceed the change orders statutory limits. The original contract main price cannot be decreased by 50% or more without consent of the contractor. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item F1 requests and approval to accept CSP response and award negotiated construction contract, the highest ranked contractor meeting all re specified requirements are HPA site and concrete LLC for SP, CSP number ACDD 12102 JOA Drain McCall Road Culver Crossing 2018 Bonner Freedom Project 15 in the amount 166072. As approved and negotiated by the Board of Directors Agenda number 81324 June 25th, 2021, excuse me, subject legal review and compliance house bill 1295. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. F2, pursuant to Texas Law Code 262031 and interest expanded project progress, request an authority approval for drainage district manager to execute change orders that involve an increase or decrease in the cost of 50000 or less and in no event to exceed the change orders statutory limits. The original contract price may not be decreased by 2% or more with the consent of the contract. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. G1, approval of application payment number four, the amount of $4,063.50 of Denser Contractors LLC pertaining to construction contract ACDD 120-0430915. Project Engineering Group Bonham and Yorks Engineering. Move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. D2 acceptance of certificate of, com of substitution completion from Denser Construction LLC pertaining to construction contract ACDD 120-0430915. Malone Drive and Pomelo Road. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval application payment number five in the amount of $33,471.78 from Vincent Constructors LLC pertaining to construction contract ACD 120-0430915. Uh, project engineer, Mr. Guzman, and your engineering, everything's in order. So Second. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item two, approval application payment number two in the amount of $62,505 from Moore LLC pertaining to construction contract ACD 120 Project Engineer Hafen Associates. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. 7A1, approval application for payment number two in the amount of $220,071.60 from Science Brothers Construction. Virginia Construction Contract, ACDD 120 1112 Project Engineer, Javier and Jose Engineering. Move for approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 782, <laughs> approval of application payment number four in the amount of 199 from Science Brothers Construction. Virginia Construction Contract, ACDD 120 Project Engineer, Mr. Salibar from my office. Move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 8A, Rainbow Drain Fund 130, request and approval to pay $116,274.32 to Dow County Precinct number four for construction of Rainbow Drain for the following pay periods. Pay period nine for $53,567.25. Pay period 10, $31,297. Pay period 11, $8,169.88. And pay period 12, $23,246.49. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We do have some real estate matters in, in, in uh, executive session. Okay, uh, pursuant to subchapter D of chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, we'll be retiring to closed session to discuss items in code section 551.072, 551.074. May I have a motion to do so? So to me. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It's 256. Okay, we're back from executive session. It's uh, 3 three thirteen. We do have some action items to take. Uh, with regard to uh, real property, uh, we'll need a motion to authorize the administration of the drainage district to proceed as discussed in the closed meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 
Motion carries. With regard to uh, attorney consultation and contemplated litigation, we'll need a motion to authorize uh, legal counsel to proceed with the eminent domain proceedings as discussed in the closed session. So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That, that's all that, That's all we needed from the closed session. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I have a motion Thank to you. reconvene. Thank you, Judge meeting. Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So moved to reconvene. Second. We have a motion to second to reconvene Commissioner's Court meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Before, before we go to our regular agenda items, I'd like to have, a, we had an, an employee pass away, du, Dunia, or what, what was the, the, the name? Dunia. Costa? Dunia. Dunia, I'm sorry, I apologize. Dunia Costa, she's been a long time uh, employee for work for the facilities management. Let's, let's honor her and her passing by having a moment of, of silence in, in her memory. Thank you, everyone. Next item is the approval of the consent agenda. Judge Commissioners, I'm gonna ask that we uh, take that later on the agenda. Okay, then we have open forum. Do we have speakers for open forum? Yes, first we have Ms. Elizabeth Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez. Elizabeth Rodriguez. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, next up we have Ms. Fern McClurdy. Commissioners, I was uh, hoping that because uh, hoping that because you have had fewer meetings, you would have at least reduced the spending and stopped hiring so many people. But when I looked at the agenda, there it is again. If you would re, uh, recall, Judge, uh, County Judge Ramon first uh, proposed the idea of a new courthouse, and it was based on 150, 150 million for everything, and it would not, absolutely not increase taxes because our people could not afford it. That's what he said back then. Our prediction has always been 450 million based on the bonds that have been sold. This does not include the three-year closing the university drive from the courthouse to the expressway and the high-rise parking facility. Before you go uh, too far on the parking facility, look at Mac Allen, uh, their parking thing. Uh, it's used very little, and it's not used after 5 p.m. Everyone goes home. No one stays to shop. We are now a, a, are predicting that the poverty rate will increase to 50%. The combination of 400 million for the courthouse that nobody wants and the significant increase in our property poverty rates will be uh, your legacy to the people of Hidalgo County. Today in the monitor's front page, there are 671 new COVID cases in Hidalgo County. The one good thing is that the death rate is very low. Two reported on Monday, one on Friday, zero on Thursday, one last Tuesday, zero last Monday. The deaths, the number of deaths are very, very low now, but not the positive cases. Why? Could it be because you are allowing sick illegals in our country and doing nothing to stop them? When are you going to protect the people who live in Hidalgo County? And finally, I did not see any county officials at the border. Is it that your actions mm -hmm. are so political that you believe that the disease being brought in will only impact uh, Republicans? County commissioners are responsible for the health and safety of all residents and in interaction to place the health of all residents at risk is what you're doing. By participating, uh, the people of our county are endangered. And today on the agenda, uh, you're going 16B and 16D. You're hiring seven positions, 
and we're talking over $300,000. In the 16D, you're hiring 50 new positions for $2,980,874, and you only have available $750. That's for our courthouse there. So I wish that y'all would look at the health of our county. I see that y'all get up and throw your mask on, but we, if the deaths are going down, why are the, the cases going up? And it's because you're allowing all the people to come in. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Magnuson, next presenter. Next, we have Ricky Longoria. Mr. Longoria, uh, uh, and, and just for information purposes, as everyone in the audience has been here before, there's a three minute time limit and I'll advise when, you, when there's one minute left. Thank you very much, I'll try to be brief. Uh, County Judge Commissioners, thank you, thank you for allowing me to speak with you all today. The purpose of my visit is really just to invite you all personally uh, to an event that we're hosting at Sherry Land that we think is a very important event uh, given uh, the COVID environment that we live in right now. It is a Sherry Land prayer walk for education. Um, just by background, last year, myself and some board members from our community got together and started thinking about a variety of different things that we could be doing uh, just to make sure that our students and our, and our teachers were safe. And we embarked on a prayer walk consisting of board members and administrators to the San Juan, San Juan Shrine. That was a nine plus mile walk that we did solely for the purpose of praying for kids and, and teachers and educators uh, throughout, the, you know, throughout the county. Uh, this year we find ourselves in a very similar predicament. We have uh, COVID cases rising again. We have the Delta variant out, out there. We have schools continue to get mixed signals on how we should be managing ourselves. CDC just, just posted that now they want schools to have masks indoors, whereas you know the governor is not allowing us to, uh, to require masks indoors. So, so we are under a lot of pressure as, as, as school board members, that, as, as educators, uh, to try to do the right thing. And ultimately we are asking God to take care of everybody. And so we're hosting a community event. This is not a Sherryland event, it's hosted by Sherryland but is to invite all members of our community of Hidalgo County to come out, pray for educators. And when I say educators, I don't just mean teachers and administrators, but some of you are former school board members. So you, you know that includes bus drivers and custodians and everybody that's, in, that's involved with the, with the educational process. We have to open schools. We will open schools. We'll do it this, as safely as we can, but we certainly wanna make sure that we ask God to please help us in that process. So we do have a prayer walk to occur on August 7th to begin at 7.30, Judge Cortez has, has, uh, has, uh, has uh, 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 been invited, will be attending and get, uh, op opening this up with some, some, uh, some words. Commissioner Vidal, I know that you've been uh, invited and hope, hope to see you all there, but it's, it's, not, it's not a Sherryland thing, it is a, it is a entire com community thing. This year we're not walking to, to the shrines, so you don't have to be worried <laughs> about walking nine miles, uh, but, but, but we have shortened it this year. We're all walking to the Palmhurst Chapel, which is just going up Sherry Road, starting off at our Sherryland High School Stadium and wa walking back. We're working with the City of Mission and City of Palmhurst to coordinate the safety of all the walkers. We will start at 7.30. We'll also uh, start with the blessing of, of the, uh, of the uh, participants and very simply, we will walk in prayer. And so I just want to convey that to you all. I want to invite everybody here, uh, each, each and one of you all in our entire community because this is going to be a community challenge, not a, not a challenge that, that is unique to any one particular district located in the county. So thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thank you, sir. I do have some, uh, some, uh, uh, some notices, if you will, some, if I can just leave them here, maybe you all can take them. Thank you. Great event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Magus, our next presenter. Yes, next up we have Mr. Gary Groves. Thank you for your service to our community. Um, on my way over here, I was made aware of the situation with the DA. And so on behalf of the Hidalgo County Republican Party, our chairwoman, Adrian Pena Garza, I would like to say just a little prayer for the DA. Dear God, please bless and protect our DA. Send healing to him and also send healing to all the people in our community that need it. And please, dear God, uh, send comfort to his family. And also, I would like to include the woman who passed away. Please give comfort to her family. Thank you. And so I'm also here on behalf of the Hidalgo County Republican Party. Uh, we're having an event uh, on Thursday night, July 29th, 
from 6 to 8 to honor our wonderful Border Patrol. You know, they're, they're going through a tough time. You probably know better than me. Um, so uh, we're going to have some mayors. Um, and and uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't invite you all to come honor the Border Patrol. And again, I've given Mr. Guerra the info on that event. And, and uh, thank you for listening to me today. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers. Okay. Judge Commissioners, I'm going to ask uh, that we uh, approve the consent agenda, but I'd like to pull uh, from the consent agenda um, if I can get my agenda 12A, 1, and 2. Make a motion to approve the rest of the consent. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, with respect to 12 uh, consent agenda, item 12A, 1 and 2, for the record, Commissioner Fuentes will be abstaining from any discussion and or action. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Fuentes abstained from voting this matter or taking part in the discussion. Okay. Item 6A. Judge Commissioners, uh, this is a request to accept a donation from CGI Communications for the service of providing nine promotional videos to Hidalgo County free of charge, estimated in-kind value of $60,000. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, come on, come on, Nestor. Hey, good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Um, item 6B reads ratification of the submission of grant extension request to the Moody Foundation to allow additional time to complete community outreach and emergency management projects. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, item 6B2 requests approval to accept the extension of time granted by the Moody Foundation for the expenditure of community outreach and emergency management funds from July 24, 2021 to October 31st, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. Item 7A. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Misty Palacios with the Hidalgo County Public Affairs Office, and I will be assisting the District Attorney's Office reading the proclamation. May I begin? Please. Proclamation declaring World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Whereas World Day Against Trafficking in Persons provides an opportunity for Hidalgo County to renew our commitment to combating human trafficking in all its forms. And whereas human trafficking tears at our social fabric, fuels violence and organized crime, and debases our common humanity. And whereas human trafficking is a global tragedy, combating it requires international, national, state and local action. According to the International Labor Organization, there are an estimated 40.3 million victims of human trafficking worldwide. And whereas the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office is working with national, state, regional, and local stakeholders to fight against human trafficking and to provide assistance to victims of human trafficking. And whereas the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office hereby is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities and our victim responders, and working for justice for all victims and survivors. And whereas we must join together as a community in Hidalgo County to provide a safe haven by protecting victims and prosecuting traffickers. With improved victim identification, medical and social services, training for first responders and increased public awareness, the men, women and children who have suffered the scourge can overcome the bonds of modern slavery, receive protection and justice and successfully reclaim their rightful independence. And whereas the Hidalgo, I'm sorry, excuse me, whereas 
The Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force calls on every single person in our community to report human trafficking and join prevention efforts. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby declares July 30th, 2021, as World, World Day Against Trafficking in Persons in Hidalgo County, approved this 27th day of July, 2021. Move for approval, second. We have a motion, second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you very much for. for Good afternoon, Judge and Commissioners. My name is Serena Scamardo, and I am the Victims Unit Interim Director. On behalf of the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office, as well as the Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney, Ricardo Rodriguez Jr., we would like to thank you for allowing us to be here this afternoon. Thank you for always being supportive on this issue and so many issues that exist not only in Hidalgo County, but in Texas and throughout our nation. We would like to take, take this moment to give our thanks to our stakeholders who are viewing virtually. We would also like to, like to recognize our attendees. Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office, Domestic Violence Unit, thank you. Chief Amy Cantu, Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office, Crime Victim Liaison Nicola Suara, Deputy Juan Avila, Captain Lopez, Chief Enriquez, and Lieutenant Serna. Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force Executive Board, Bill Bergano, Doctors at Hospital at Renaissance Safe Haven, Director Rosa Fernandez, and Fire Police Department Chief Andrew Harvey, Assistant Chief Joel Robles, Human Trafficking Liaison Nancy Gonzalez, Crime Victims Liaison Joe Dimas, Crime Victims Liaison Mario Garza, Family Violence Liaison Alan Cantu, Deputy Chief Johnny Gonzalez, and Deputy Chief Mike Mendoza. It is important that we shine light on the global problem of trafficking, which is a serious crime and a, a grave violation of human rights. People trafficking and modern day slavery is a massive worldwide problem with very few countries immune to human trafficking. World Day Against Trafficking in Persons is an event that was created by the United Nations to raise awareness and increase prevention. Traffic people are forced to work often doing hard labor or prostitution for no reward. They usually have their identity and documents removed from them while being warned of terrible punishments if they choose to escape. They are taken to unfamiliar countries where they do not know the language, which minimizes their chances of receiving help. Some die and some are never heard of again by their families and communities. Through the judicial system, we are, here to we are able to help victims and also heavily prosecute human traffickers. This year's theme, Victims' Voices Lead the Way, highlights the importance of listening to and learning from survivors of human trafficking. Survivors play a crucial role in establishing effective measures to prevent this crime, identify and rescue victims, and support them on their road to rehabilitation. Learning from victims' experiences and turning their suggestions into concrete actions will lead to a more victim-centered and effective approach in combating human trafficking. A global problem like trafficking needs a global solution which is why the United Nations organized the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons to raise awareness and encourage vigilance and gain support for prevention of human trafficking. A protocol has been created by the United Nations to punish human trafficking with hopes to implement this globally. Now, um, Mr. Gilbert Gano. Hello everybody, my name is Juan Gano. I'm with the Rio Grande Valley Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. I just want to come on behalf of our task force, thank you for always being supportive of our initiatives and awareness to the community and those out there who are suffering at the hands of these traffickers. Thank you very much. Now domestic violence, uh, Chief Amy Cantu. Good afternoon, Judge and Commissioners. Um, just to say a few words, uh, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here today. Uh, World Day Against Trafficking in Persons is held on the 30th of July of each year. As mentioned earlier, trafficking is a massive worldwide problem. Thousands of men, women, and children end up in the hands of traffickers every year, often through being tricked and misled to believe that they are being taken to work. So we ask ourselves today, why do we wear blue? The blue heart represents the sadness of those who are trafficked, while reminding us also of the cold-heartedness of those who buy and sell fellow human beings. So we invite you on Friday, July 30th, 
to wear blue to raise awareness. Thank you, Judge. To conclude, we extend our most sincere gratitude to the community leaders and partnering agencies for your continued collaboration in the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons Prevention Campaign. We especially want to thank you for your unrelenting support in our mission to protect and assist victims of trafficking. We would also like to take this time to acknowledge the advocates, coordinators, and staff from the Victims Unit and Domestic Violence Unit for their assistance in spreading prevention awareness information. Together, we can continue to raise awareness and promote safe relationships. Our office recommits to take part in ending the cycle of trafficking. The Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney's Office is available and willing to help create a safety plan or apply for a protective order. Please do not hesitate to contact our Victims Unit at 956-292-7616. Thank you. No, thank you all very much. It's, it's unfortunately, it is a worldwide problem and we thank you for your service very much and we'll try to remember to wear blue on Friday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Commissioners. And all Thank our best you. to the DA. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next item is 7B. I'm sorry for making it because the DA. Judge Commissioners, if I, if, if I may, for the uh, for the DA's office. Go ahead. So seven B is uh, for the DA's Victims Unit Court and Advocate. Bande. I'm sorry, I'm here. Oh, okay, Miss Rosie. Thank Item seven B, the DA's Victims Unit Court Advocate Program Grant Fund twelve eighty one. We're asking. To for approval to submit a VUCAP grant number 3596402 budget adjustment to the office of the governor. Motion to approve. Second. Second. I have, <coughs> I have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7C. We're asking for approval to submit a VAP grant number 2924303 budget adjustment to the office of the governor. So motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7D, the DA's title of 4E Fund 1100. We're asking for approval for county judge to sign the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act document as required by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services for the Title 4E grant program for fiscal year October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7E, we're asking for approval to submit the an updated grantee information sheet to the Office of the Governor, uh, Attorney General, I'm sorry, to the Office of the Attorney General for the VCLG Grant Fund 1281. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7F, we're asking for approval of Memorandum of Understanding between Hidalgo County Criminal District Attorney Ricardo Rodriguez Jr. and the Texas Victim Services Association. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8A, we will be taking a no action on the HIDA, uh, HIDA Task Force item. Carlos, you want to go ahead and judge? If we could uh, take a photo. Uh, sure. You all want us to go down there?
Bottom meeting. Okay, what, what item do you want to take? Well, item 9A, Judge. Okay. Judge Commissioners, with your permission, I'll be presenting for the County Clerk. County Clerk is asking or is requesting approval of the official continuation certificate for Elections Administrator, Ms. Yvonne Ramon. Motion to approve. Taken. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 10A. Good afternoon, Judge and Commissioners. Captain David Friedland for Sheriff J.E. Eddie Guerra. Under 10A, discussion, consideration, and approval to appoint Gabriel Hinojosa, student at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, as intern under the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office Law Enforcement Internship Program for the period of August 2021 to December 2021. So moved. Taken. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Item 11A, Constable Precinct Number One. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners, Deputy Gonzalez for Precinct One Office. Uh, item 11A1, discussion, consideration, and approval to enter into inter interlocal cooperation agreement between Hidalgo County, acting by and through Constable Precinct One and Tropical Texas Behavior Health (TTBH) for the fiscal year 2021, September 1st, 2021 to August 31st, 2022 in relation to safety and security services. Motion to approve. So second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, authorization for county judge as authorized official to execute the interlocal agreement. You wanna to go to number three? Approval of certification of revenues as certified by county auditor in the amount of 78,801 and appropriation of the same. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 11B, uh, discussion, consideration, and approval to enter into an interlocal cooperation agreement between Hidalgo County acting by and through Constable Precinct Number 1 and Tropical Texas Behavior Health, TTBH, for the fiscal year 2021, September 1st, 2021 to August 31st, 2022, in relation to the Mental Health Officer Program, MHOP. Authorization to pay overtime reimbursal under the interlocal agreement terms and conditions. Authorization for county judge as authorized official to execute the interlocal agreement and for approval of certification of revenues as certified by county auditor in the amount of 20, 251,491 and appropriation of the same. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion to approve item B1, 2, 3, and 4. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Judge commissioners, with your permission, I'll be presenting for Constable Precinct 2. The next four items all work. Uh, uh, related requests in action, uh, and they're asking for approval to enter into interlocal cooperation agreement uh, between Dow County, acting by through Council Precinct Number Two and Tropical Texas Behavioral uh, for the fiscal year uh, 2021, to um, which would be September 1st, 2021, through August 31st, 2022, and this is in relation to the Justice Involved Individuals Program, uh, as well as the authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the interlocal agreement terms and conditions. Authority for county judge or authorization for county judge is authorized official to execute the interlocal agreement and approval of certification of revenues as certified by county auditor in the amount of $79,269 and appropriation of same. Motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion second to approve item 12A1 through 4. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item 12B again, relate, uh, all four relating requests in action and its approval. Father, can we just, can we just say a motion to approve items B. B one, two, three, one and four, four is listed on the agenda. Because they're all identical. So yes, sir. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 13A, Judge Commissioners for Precinct 3, Constable, it's a, approval to appoint Gerardo uh, Javier Zamora as Deputy Constable by Lázaro Gallardo Jr., Constable Precinct 3, in accordance with Texas Local Government Code Section 86.011. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, I don't know if Constable Gaitan is on, but Constable Gaitan, if you are, if I may, uh, for your office, Precinct 4, Constable Gaitan, again, it's all related uh, uh, as to the prior action. So item 14A, 1, 2, and 3, as
as listed on the agenda, we're asking for approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Item 14. Yes, thank you, Judge. Comfortable right down. Thank you so much. And item 14B, one, two, three, and four, again, uh, prior action uh, related to the prior action, again, as listed on the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 14C, one, two, three, and four, again, under the mental health officer program, uh, as listed on the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, uh, for Constable Precinct 5, if I may, Constable, if you're on the line, 15A, 1, 2, 3, and 4, again, uh, related to the prior action, uh, as listed on the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners, and thank, thank you, you, Constables. Erica. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Item 16A, I'm requesting of the waiver of the following of applicable for the personnel items listed. I need action on item number three, the budget amendment policy personnel related amendments. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16B for the Department of Budget and Management, approve the following personnel actions effective August 2nd, 2021 for the record. And this is to create the positions as listed and they're necessary to manage ARPA funding. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16C for the DA civil litigation. Item one, approval to award a discretionary step for the employee listed after approval of the HR criteria certification in accordance with section 8.03 of the classification and compensation plan, effective July 12, 2021. This is a discretionary step two for slot 0017. And item number two is approval to award a discretionary step for the employee listed after approval of the HR criteria certification in accordance with section 8.03 of the classification and compensation plan, this is effective July 19th, 2021. Another discretionary step two, this is for slot 0007. Everything is in compliance with the policy. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16D for a courthouse security. I am requesting approval of the following personal actions effective uh, October 1st, 2021. This is to create the positions as listed and these positions will be required for operation of the new county courthouse. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16E for the district attorney's office. Approve the following personnel actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. I am requesting authorization to create the positions as listed. Uh, with the auto allowances listed. These positions are to be funded from ARPA funding and will be handling additional cases resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. So Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16F for precinct one road um, bridge approval the following personal actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. This is a title change for slot 0169 from buyer two to maintenance four. There is no fiscal impact. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 16G for Precinct 3, Road and Bridge, approve the following personnel actions effective upon Commissioner's Court approval. Delete slot 106, Equipment Operator 2, Grade 8, and create slot 0123 and Equipment Operator 2, 3, Grade 10. And this is due to workload requirements at Precinct 3. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 16H. For Precinct 3, Road and Bridge as well, approve the following personnel action effective upon Commissioner's Court approval through December 31st, 2021. This is to add a supplemental allowance to slot 0021, uh, Program Manager 3, in the amount of 5560 and this is due to additional duties that have been assigned to an employee uh, temporarily only through the end of the year. Motion to approve. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is approval of the interdepartmental transfer. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And my final item, 16I for County Court at Law Number One. I'm requesting approval to extend the following temporary full-time position, effective August 2nd through August 20th, 2021. This is for slot T006 of Bailiff One, and this is due to the bailiff being needed. Uh, for uh, continuation of the position until he transitions to a permanent full-time position that's being vacated. I do recommend approval. Motion so to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you Very so much. 
Item 17A, Head Start Program. Good afternoon, Teresa Flores from Hidalgo County Head Start Program. The following items are, in, are for the outdoor um, learning environments and discovery classrooms project that is forthcoming. And on the first one, we are looking for professional services, construction manager services. Um, the first part is uh, letter A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas law for these professional services. Do I go to the next one or do you no, want to no. approve each one? No, motion, motion to approve. Second. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, now you can. Thank you, the letter B is presentation of the scoring grade for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of the forms graded and evaluated to the court's approved pool of construction manager services providers to oversee and supervise the development and construction of the Hidalgo County Head Start Program outdoor learning environments and discovery classrooms project according to specifications. We're uh, recommending approval uh, or we're recommending the grid as presented from the three evaluators. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three is authority for Hidalgo County Head Start Program manager services contract commencing with the number one ranked firm of um, it's listed there um, we have um, uh, SDI engineering uh, commencing with a uh, with that uh, first ranked to oversee and to supervise the development and construction of the Hidalgo County Head Start program outdoor learning environments and discovery classrooms project according to specifications that's not no that's not correct yeah. the number ranked firm is b2z with a score of 284 make it a motion to approve b2z the highest score second all in favor say aye aye, aye. motion carries item number two professional services engineering services requesting exemption from competitive competitive bidding requirements under the texas local government code 262.024 professional services. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Did we, did we do see? Letter B is presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of engineering services to provide structural engineering and other related engineering services for the Hidalgo County Head Start program, outdoor learning environment and discovery classrooms project according to specifications and the grid is presented. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter C is authority for Hidalgo County Head Start Program to negotiate a professional engineering services contract commencing with the number one ranked firm of uh, Consor Engineering um, Services for Hidalgo County Head Start Program outdoor learning environment and discovery classrooms project according to specifications as appropriate slash required. Motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The third item is professional services for architectural services. Letter A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4 uh, uh, professional services. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter B is presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of the firms rated, rated, I'm sorry, graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of architectural services for number one, design and development drawings and specifications for a site plan. Number two, design and development of construction drawings and specifications for all structures in the project. Letter three, number three, and any other related architectural services required to complete the Hidalgo County Head Start Program outdoor learning environments and discovery classrooms. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. The letter C is authority for Hidalgo County Head Start Program to negotiate a professional architectural services uh, contract commencing with the number one ranked firm of the Warren Group. Um, two, um, number one, design and develop drawings and specifications for a site plan. Number two, design and development of construction drawings. Um, and specifications for the structures in the project. And number three, 
and perform any other related architectural functions required to complete the Hidalgo County Head Start program, outdoor learning environments, and discovery classrooms project. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item four, professional contracted service, geotechnical engineering services. And letter A is requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code 262.024, A4, professional services. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter B, presentation of the scoring grade for the purpose of ranking by commissioners scored and the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of geotechnical engineering services to perform geotechnical services and construction materials testing for Hidalgo County Head Start Program Outdoor Learning Environment and Discovery Classrooms Project as approved or required. And the, the grid is presented from the three evaluators. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter C is authority for Hidalgo County Head Start Program to negotiate a professional geotechnical engineering services and materials uh, testing contract commencing with the number one ranked firm of Terracom to perform geotechnical services and construction material testing services for the, the Hidalgo County Head Start Program outdoor learning environments and discovery classrooms project as appropriate slash required. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, administration recommends no action on letter E by mistake. The same grid was uh, placed in there that was uh, for geotechnical engineering services and it should have been for MEP and so uh, that grid uh, did not appear so we'll bring that to you uh, in the next meeting. So no action on that one. So judge commissioners Pledge for commissioner, the Commissioner, this is Marty with purchasing. If I could just make sure that Ms. Flooded clarifies that all of these services are related to the Head Start Center on 107 only. Yes. Yes, all of these uh, services are related to the project behind our building in the three and a half acres that we're planning to utilize. Thank you. Thank you. And judge commissioners. Um, uh, in connection with Ms. that, Flores. I'd like to uh, thank, of course, uh, Commissioner Torres for her guidance and, and assistance and Ms. Leti Sainz and Jaime Salazar from the drainage district and of course our staff here in the purchasing department and uh, um, Ms. Uh, uh, Salazar and um, uh, uh, Ms. Betsy from uh, Ms. Salazar's department. Um, this was a, a, uh, an extensive you know, uh, process and I wanna thank them for their assistance and their help. Um, on Ms. the next slide, we have Flores. a memorandum of understanding. Ms. Flores, Flores, hold just a minute. Flores. Yes. If you can give me one second. So judge commissioners, for the record, the no action is on item 17E, A, B, and C. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, letter F is a memorandum of agreement, and this is for services that the drainage district uh, will be providing for us. Uh, for our um, the same project and we are looking to receive um, services that have to do with a subdivision plat that needs to be developed survey that needs to be presented and the civil engineering that have to do with this particular project that uh, must happen of course uh, before anything else takes place out there so um, the memorandum of, of understanding uh, lists the details uh, they were worked out together with our attorney and uh, the DA's, um, well, the attorney, uh, Richard Garza, assisted Rick Gonzalez in the process of putting it together so that we could be able to uh, secure the services. We're grateful uh, for the services to be provided as it will save our project uh, a lot of time and money. So uh, that's what this MOU is about. Are there any particular questions? Motion to approve. We need Second. a motion to approve. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and then the last item we have is our application for for part of the funding, um, the other part of the funding, the one point one million dollars, one point one one million one hundred and ten thousand five seventy six is what we're uh, submitting an application for at this particular time. The remaining will be submitted when we get the the proper documents, um, because the feds do require that we have uh, appropriate. Um, credential personnel to do the engineering, the architectural and all of that information has to be submitted before the second part of the funding can be approved for expenditure. So what you have here is this first part and this particular 
um, set of money has been set aside for us, $1,110,576, and we're uh, uh, diverting this money into the purchase of shuttle buses, which are going to help assist with transportation in our program, as well as with uh, shuttle buses for assisting our classes to be transported to our, to our, our outdoor classrooms here at, behind our building. What happens here is that um, in the past, we've had a shortage of bus drivers and CDL, drives, uh, CDL licensed staff is not readily available. That's throughout the county, throughout the state with regards to school districts and so forth. So we compete. And so of course a higher pay is elsewhere. And so we, we, we've had issues with that. So what we're purchasing are 15 passenger buses that do not require the CDL, but would require us to have special training and so at this point, we're submitting this part of the application. And then of course, the remaining amount of the 110, so that's a total of um, $936,715, with the remaining being used for uh, renovations at the centers that we will come, of course, with those specific uh, renovations to you at a later time. But uh, what you see here is what is being submitted to the Office of Head Start for uh, approval for expenditure. And this was, of course, under the COVID-19 funds that were supplemental funds. So administration is submitting this application. Attached to it, you see the cost of those shuttle buses and three vehicles that we're getting for the maintenance department. So administration is recommending approval of, of this so application for submitted. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Again, thank you very much for all your assistance and help, uh, uh, Commissioner Torres and uh, the rest of the staff, uh, Ms. Salazar, and, and then for the drainage district for the big part that they're gonna play in, in assisting us with saving us some money. And we'll be, of course, moving along with trying to work all the details about this. Thank you. We'll come back with the contracts for approval. Thank you. Uh, item 18A, Urban County, Mr. Avila. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Judge. For item 18A, one, requesting approval of a memo of understanding between Hidalgo County, Irving County Program, the Texas Homeless Network, and the following housing authorities. The Housing Authority of, Hidalgo, of the County of Hidalgo, the Edinburgh Housing Authority, the McAllen Housing Authority, Mission Housing Authority, and the FAR Housing Authority. And approval for Hidalgo County, Irving County Program Director to sign the, to sign the memo of understanding. We'll be assisting them uh, in administering their emergency housing voucher program, you know, in accordance with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development regulations. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For item 18B, discussion, consideration, and action to proceed with providing notice of intent to exercise the options under Section 4 allocation provisions of the current interlocal agreement between the County of Hidalgo, Texas, and the city of Sullivan City for the implementation of CDBG activities and expenditures to be carried out in the city's jurisdiction as per 24 CFR 570. Motion to approve. Second. second. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For item 18C, requesting approval of the resolution authorizing to advertise for construction and related activities for all projects identified in the program years, one year action plans, sub subsequent amendments, and Colonia funded activities. Uh, Texas, Texas General Land Office, Texas Department of Agriculture, and the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And for item 18D, requesting approval of a resolution to authorize the Urban County Program Director to approve certain orders on urban county projects, not to exceed $50,000. So moved. Second. All right, in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. For item 18E, subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, the urban county program is requesting approval of a best and final negotiated contract for professional services construction material testing services with Robert Kistner Inc. in the amount of $15,616.15 utilizing city funds and approval of work authorization one. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And just for the record, this one has already been approved by legal. And for item 18F, subject to compliance with House Bill 1295, 
the Irving County program is requesting approval of the best and final negotiated contract for professional services, construction material testing with Robert Kistner Consultants in the amount of $13,228.73, utilizing CDBG 2020 street improvement fundings and approval of work authorization number one, pending legal review. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Olivares. Good afternoon, everyone. Eddie Olivares, Hidalgo County Health and Human Services. I have a few items today. Item 19A, requesting approval to submit grant renewal application for tuberculosis fund, a CY22 program that will include $437,771 in grant funds with an $87,554 in local match, which has been budgeted through our annual budget. Uh, as for your permission to take action on this. I recommend approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is requesting approval to submit grant application to the Texas Department of State Health Services for COVID-19 immunization round four funding for the county judge to sign all related documents. We're finishing up this grant search. This is something we're gonna submit for round four uh, funding, uh, upwards close to $2 million of funding uh, that we're gonna submit with your permission. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C is requesting approval to accept the Title V Child Health and Dental Services Grant contract number HHS 00068760002, amendment number one, for County Judge to e sign the amendment. The purpose of the amendment is to add $11,024 and to extend the termination date to August 31st, 2022. Uh, and then item two on the same issue is requesting approval certification of revenue in the amount of $11,024 uh, to the appropriate, the same. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, sir, is the healthcare funding district. A discussion, consideration, and approval to draw down funds for the uniform hospital rate increase program or called URIP in the amount to be determined by Health and Human Services Commission instructions from the local provider participation fund, the LPPF, with a text net transfer date of August 5th, 2021, and a settlement date of August 7th, 2020, correction, August 6th, 2021. The total amount for the six counties is $6,1,752.64. The Hidalgo County portion is yet to be calculated by the state, but we'll have all that completed by Friday of this week to be able to submit to the state. And there's no impact to general fund. This is uh, the local participation provider fund from the hospitals. May I have a motion please? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is approving certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor from the local provider participation fund and the amount to be determined by Health and Human Services Commission, which I said the instructions hopefully will be here by Friday, the amount, but is well within the budgetary amounts uh, on that line item from the local participation provider fund from the hospitals. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Last item is approval of appropriations of the funds for local provider participation fund uh, and the amount to be determined by Health and Human Services Commission, hopefully by this Friday, we'll have that final amount, sir. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Adult probation. Uh, good afternoon, Judge, Commissioners. Uh, Faustino Lopez with the Adult Probation Department. I'm here on item 20, A, one, two, and three. Ratification of approval to apply for the fiscal year 2022 federal Veterans uh, Court Grant, approval to accept the fiscal year 2022 Veterans Court Grant Award from the Texas Veterans Commission for the period of 7-1-2021 and 6-30-2022, and approval, for, approval of certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor in the amount of $50,000 in appropriation of the same. Motion to approve 20A, 1, 2, and 3. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Judge, Commissioners. Judge, with your permission, um, I'd like to, uh, at this time, I'd like to ask permission of the court to see if you'll allow me to observe a moment of silence in honor of a dedicated volunteer uh, who we lost over the weekend and a, a former very dedicated employee to the Hidalgo County Head Start program. Her name was Enedelia Fricks, who passed away on, on Saturday, July the 24th. With your permission, I'd like to observe a moment of silence in her honor. Yes, please. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Just briefly, Enadelia Fricks was an active foster grandparent volunteer with Hidalgo County. Mrs. Fricks had 25 years of experience with Hidalgo County Head Start as a teacher and later became a center supervisor in McAllen, Edinburgh, and Alamo, Texas. After retiring from Head Start, she became a foster grandparent volunteer for four years. She was loved by all her Head Start children and, and was instrumental in providing firsthand experiences to the Head Start teachers. She was a great mentor to the children in the FAR Texas Head Start Center. She mentored her coworkers in the foster grandparent program and motivated others to volunteer. Mrs. Fricks passed uh, peacefully at her home on Saturday, July 24th. She leaves behind two children, five grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren whom she loved very dearly. Just a, a quick word on, on our foster grandparents and our senior companions, Judge. Uh, you well know and the court well knows uh, that during the pandemic, during the height of the pandemic, these volunteers, they, they worked from home. And what they did was these are all folks that are over the age of 55 and retired they would call other seniors in the community. They had a list of seniors that they would call on and check on to make sure that they were uh, in good health, that they had everything that they needed, that they had food, they had water, they had all of the things that they needed. Uh, and Adelia was one of those folks who was out there uh, really on the front lines, making sure that people were taken care of and we will miss her dearly. With your permission, I'll go on to item 20, uh, 21A. It's discussion, consideration, and possible action to approve uh, the budget amendment for community services block grant disaster relief supplemental funds, contract number 612-00003282 for an increased amount of uh, $898,744 uh, from the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs with authorization for Jaime Longoria to electronically sign any and all pertinent documents. Judge, the, the actual amount of the increase is that $898,744 the original grant was 180,295. Uh, so this makes it uh, a little bit over a million dollars. It's a million seventy nine thousand sixty nine dollars uh, that will be available for families that were affected by the 2019 uh, flood in the Monte Alto, La Villa and Mercedes area. Uh, a, a big shout out to precinct one uh, Commissioner Fuentes and his staff for assisting us in gathering applications in the rural areas and to uh, to Mayor uh, the mayor of Mercedes, uh, who's, who's helping us with uh, making sure that the, the, the residents in Mercedes are able to apply for these funds as well. So we're, we're really trying to work the most affected areas first, and uh, we're very grateful for all of the support we receive from those entities. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I will say also, Judge, that it's a very... Uh, uh, it's, it's, a t it's a tight deadline. We have a little over a month and a half to spend all this money, so we're working uh, at a fever pitch to, uh, to get those taken care of. Uh, we've got item uh, 21B is discussion, consideration, and possible action to accept a $300,000 grant from the Texas Veterans Commission Fund for Veterans Assistance for program year 2021-2022 for Operation Bravo Zulu with authorization for Jaime Longoria to electronically sign any and all pertinent documents Judge, this represents the sixth year. Uh, we're starting our sixth year with uh, Operation Bravo Zulu. That's, that's $1.8 million that we've brought to uh, the residents or the veterans of Hidalgo County. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item uh, 21C is authorization to extend the interdepartmental transfer from the county's general fund to the Hidalgo County Community Service Agency to be utilized as operational funds to be reimbursed at 90 days after termination of the Bravo Zulu grant, which begins July 1st, 2021, and ends June 30th, 2022. For the information of the court, this is $180,000 that, that rolls over to helps us uh, start the, the, the grant cycle. 
uh, and then it's reimbursed and we continue that through the end of the uh, the end of the grant cycle at, in June of next year. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item. Item 22A, uh, authorization and approval to name a county road in Precinct 1 as Tijerina Road as recommended by the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council 911 Department. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion <coughs> carries. 23A, requesting approval to accept counter offer to purchase tract of land known as Parcel 35 associated with the Precinct 2 Eldora Road project from FM3362 to Veterans Boulevard with authority for the county judge to sign the administrative evaluation and approval form. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve, sir. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 24A, a request to approve the interlocal cooperation agreement project in accordance with Texas Government Code 791.014, Hidalgo County, Texas, acting by and through the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court, has been advised of a proposed road improvement project of approximately 2,640 linear feet of mile five road, beginning at the intersection of Tom Gill Road, west of west and ending in the intersection of Rancho Brasil Road through an interlocal cooperation agreement entered into with the city of Peñitas and Hidalgo County. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Motion carried. Item 24B, before I uh, read this item, I want to say a couple of words about uh, Mr. Eugene, uh, Gene E. Houts. He was born in Hargill and raised on the farm in McCook. Uh, he graduated from Edinburgh High School and then went on to uh, go to U.S. Air Force and after his honorable discharge, returned to the land he loved. He then graduated from Texas a and in Kingsville and was well known for sharing his knowledge with any farmer interested. He taught many local farmers different ways to conserve and protect so topsoil from the strong wind, winds, which always blew in that area. He was named Soil Conservation Farmer of the Year for his great efforts. He sat on the board of directors uh, of the Sherryland Water Supply Board, and he was instrumental in bringing city water to the McCook area. Gene also sat on the board of directors of FHA and the board of the Edinburgh Co-op. He was an extra extraordinary man who earned the respect of thousands, taught farming techniques to anyone who would listen, including foreign agricultural dignitaries from many countries, including Africa, Egypt, India, and parts of Asia. Item 24B, requesting authorization and approval to rename CR 4304 in Precinct 3 to Houts Road, as recommended by the LRGV DC 911 Department. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Requesting authorization to issue payment to Enterprise Products Operating LLC in the amount of $27,761 estimated cost for the comp compensable utility for the Mile 3 North Road project from FM 492 to Tom Gill Road with authorization for county treasurer to issue payment once auditing procedures are completed by county auditor. Motion to approve? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion, consideration, and approval to enter into a JUA between Enterprise Products Operating LLC and Hidalgo County for the Mile 3 North Road Project. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Cruz. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioner, Study Cruz, Department of Budget Management. Item 25A is approval of resolution recognizing the Hidalgo County Department of Budget Management for receiving the Government Finance Officers Association Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Judge Commissioner, would you like to read the resolution? Yes. Uh, whereas Hidalgo County has been awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award uh, from Government Finance Officers Association, uh, GFOA, in Chicago, Illinois, for the fiscal year that ended December 31st, 2020, and whereas the certificate of achievement is the highest form of recognition in government budgeting and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by the government and its management. 
And whereas when a distinguished budget presentation award is granted to an entity, a certificate of recognition for budget presentation is also presented to the individual or department designated as being primarily responsible for having achieved the award. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby congratulates the Hidalgo County Department of Budget Management for this notable Distinguished Budget Presentation Award and applauds their standard of excellence in government budgeting, approves this 27th day of July, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes, congratulations, Sergio, and all the good work that you're Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, I'd just like to give, uh, you know, uh, my thanks to, to my staff, uh, particularly to Ms. Damari San Miguel, uh, my Division Manager for Budget Management, Mr. Ivan Cantu, Ms. Patricia Ramos, Ms. Sandra Jara, and Ms. Esmeralda Medina, which worked for uh, Ms. San Miguel, and also to Mr. Reynaldo Salazar, Division Manager for Strategic Planning and the Strategic Planning staff, and as well Ms. Merlene Munoz uh, and Ms. Veronica Ortiz, which also participated uh, during the budget process. Thank you, Judge Commissioner. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Sergio, I just want to say congratulations to you and your team, especially during COVID with all the additional work that you guys were able to handle and process. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you, Judge Commissioners, for, for your trust in, in our department and being able to, to handle that job. Uh, moving on to item 25B. Yes. It's going to be approval of unappropriation of funds for the Certificates of Obligation 2016 in the amount of $269.93. You recommend approval? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And 25C, uh, one <coughs> uh, is approval of, for county judge to sign the following documents required by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services for the Title IV e Child Welfare Service Grant Program for fiscal year ended this October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022, uh, as well as the Federally Funded Accountability and Transparency Act. Recommend approval? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 25D1 is approval of 2021 appropriation of funds from the general fund restricted fund balance, county clerk's record archive, in the amount of $284,280 to fund the preservation of records uh, for the county clerk's office. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And 25D2 is approval of 2021 unappropriation of funds in the amount of $14,474.57. This is for the DA's uh, Chapter 59 forfeiture fund. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 25D3 is approval of 2021 appropriation in the amount of $1,193,450.03 uh, from the general fund restricted fund balance relating to revenues for the courthouse facility fee. We recommend approval. So, so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Thank Mr. you very much, sir. Good afternoon, Ms. Judge. Martha Salazar for the Purchasing de Department, going on to 26A1A and 26A1, uh, I'm sorry, A1A. Requesting approval to declare surplus the items listed on Exhibit A, Office Furniture and Electronics for the purpose of sale through uh, as posted and then further identified on the agenda. So Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B and C I'll take up together pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 263-151A and or 263-152A3. Commissioner's Court proceed and as further detailed on the posted agenda and C requesting authority to publish advertisements for the auction of surplus items scheduled for August 10th, 2021. Do have a motion to second to approve? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, presentation of the qualified sole response received BD, BD, Big D Tractor Company, LLC, DBA Penoncetti Equipment, Blue Cat Rentals for the purposes of board and contract through the RFB as posted on the agenda for the rental of heavy equipment. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Item B for precinct one, I will take items 1A and 2A together 
This is requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Lo Local Government Code 262-024-A4, a professional service for both items 1A and 2A. Motion to approve. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I will now take items 1B1B uh, and 2B together. Presentation and scoring grid for the purposes of ranking of those firms graded and evaluated. Those were Quintanilla, Headley & Associates, 95, R. Gutierrez Corporation, 91, and Vickery Associate, Associates, LLC, 93, ROW Services, 94, CZQ, Surveyors, 91, and Melden and & Hunt, Incorporated. Does the court wish to accept the scores in the order of their, uh, accept the ranking in the order of their scores? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, uh, item C for one and two. This is requesting authority for Hidalgo County Purchasing Department to commence negotiation with number one, uh, with the number one ranked firm in each one of either one and two. The first one being Quintanilla Headley and Associates. The second one being ROW Surveying Services for the purposes of on-call surveying services and and present further a final contract. May I have action? So moved. Check. <coughs> have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item three is acceptance and approval of supplemental agreement two for services under work authorization one for the contract is posted by project engineer LNG to relocate, to reallocate funds for construction management to engineering project management in the amount of 119,861 in connection with FM 88 project. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item four is requesting approval of change order number one in connection with contract number as posted and GMP amendment one with econ for the Sunset Park Operations Facility Project as recommended by the project engineer B2Z. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C for precinct two, item 1A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements. Texas Local Government Code 262-024-A4, a professional service. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is acceptance and approval of letter engagement with Betis Law Firm, a PLLC, in connection with legal matters and subject for review and compliance and all the Dallas County requirements or submittals. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, Precinct 4, approval of work authorization 4, Rabba Kistner, to provide engineering services for the geotechnical drilling, including foundation design and construction for Sunflower Park. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is approval of the MO MOA between Idaho County and Research Applied Technology Education Services, DBA Rates RGV, Lower Rigan Valley uh, Watershed Protection Consortium, a 501c3 nonprofit agency to respond to aid protection and, a, and to aid protection to the Ar Lower Rio Grande Valley watersheds. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E1, Health and Human Services, requesting approval of amendment, memorandum, memorandum of agreement, understanding with Curative to include exhibit A, locations where services are to be provided in a, <clears throat> as approved by legal counsel DA's office. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. F2, uh, acceptance and approval of amendment five to the master agreement with NetSmart Technologies with issuance of purchase order in as much as the time the vendor, it was a uh, need of, a, of immediate action. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F for WIC, discussion and consideration to approve purchase from Dell Equipment for the WIC program under the DIR contract, not to exceed $50,036.48. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G, tax office approval of preventive maintenance inspection agreement with Cummins Allison in the amount of $904 with requisition as posted, subject to compliance. So with all its requirements. Second. 
We have a motion second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item A H1 for Sheriff's Office requesting approval of second amendment to service contract uh, to clarify the intended term provisions as posted on the agenda. So moved. Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, authority and approval to exercise the county's option to utilize, and there is a correction there, it's the second one year renewal option under the same rates, terms, and conditions, not as three posted on the agenda. It is second. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under I, countywide, one pursuant to legal notice section 13, recommending waiver of formalities and or technicalities for the submission requirements to the request for bid submissions received in the best, because it is in the best interest of the county to do so. Please, I must have action on that, please. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is presentation of multiple qualified respondents listed herein submitting the lowest and best bids for the purpose and award approval of contract documents for the project titled turnkey water extraction and related services uh, <clears throat> with effective commencement days as posted on the agenda. Those four are Butch's Oil, Longhorn Services, Y Environmental, and Movac Services. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is accept the and finalize negotiated agreement contracts for the number one for the rent vendors for the project preposition disaster recovery services debris clearance removal and other miscellaneous related items i mean services to the following pen, pending legal review a is uh, primary is ashbrick secondary is drc and third is ter the tertiary is crowder gulf with one initial with an initial one year commencing uh, as posted on the agenda and with sole options to extend. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. That is all I have. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Special Commissioners, if I may, item 27A2 and 3, there'll be no action this week. Item 27A1, new construction, uh, I'm sorry, new courthouse project updates. I'm going to ask uh, Jacob's representatives to come to the podium. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, Oscar Garcia, and we have a new member to the Jacobs team, Mr. Suman Sinai, who is the Senior Construction Manager. Mr. Garcia. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Um, just want to provide you a brief update on our uh, uh, progress at the new uh, courthouse. Um, we're still working through, um, I'm pulling up the presentation, but uh, working through um, roofing system um, solutions. Um, our commissioning group has been uh, provided a couple of uh, different options. Uh, as we discussed previously, kind of an invasive, non-invasive, and or a, more of an extreme option, and, um, and that's kind of where we're leaning. Uh, but, uh, but we'll get into that as we move forward with, uh, with our efforts. Uh, we're still coordinating between construction, uh, activation, and uh, move management, and, uh, and commissioning. Commissioning is going on. We've completed the startup of equipment, and uh, which with that portion of it's coming to completion. Uh, domestic, uh, domestic water skid pump packages has been completed. Uh, development of functional performance test documents are on the completion portion, but commissioning is progressing through that. We're trying to get as much of the commissioning done uh, early on because that's just a long process through the, through, the, through the effort as you go through and test all the different component pieces of it. So we're trying to get ahead of the game and, and get that worked out. Uh, on the activation and move management side, uh, we've basically completed um, most of the meetings with uh, the key user groups. So all the new tenants that are going to be going into the building, we've met with everybody, gone through uh, the construction plans, the FF&E plans, and trying to identify any gaps between into those so that we can uh, um, ensure that they're getting uh, all the items that they need for their area. So, and then we've begun working with them with uh, workflows and workflow issues because they're coming from their current environment to a new environment, so we're going to have to change up their workflows and the like, uh, as well as some of the new tech that they're going to be uh, dealing with in the new courthouse. Um, we're going to be coordinating, uh, coordinating currently coordinating uh, ff &E deliveries uh, for levels one through four. Uh, that'll begin early next month. So we'll actually begin receiving furniture uh, and the like into the new courthouse. Um, they'll be put in kind of a stored areas as we go through the punch process. <clears throat> um, 
and then again, like I said, we were working with uh, the design team and the end users to identify any of those gaps and issues. Um, as you move forward, um, just the MTI progress to date, um, they just continue to work on finishes on different floors. As you can see on that first uh, slide, you can see the different kind of levels of completeness. Um, they should be completing the curtain wall on the east side where they had the man hoist and the material hoist. Uh, that area should be completed today or tomorrow. So that last bit of uh, curtain wall should be wrapped up. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we're still working through uh, some of the roofing items on level eight, four, and three. Um, they will be getting, uh, we will be getting punch um, on 827 and every month scheduled out another punch portion of that. Um, so we will begin that process with the design team, with Morganti, and then start uh, setting up all of the furniture into the different offices and spaces as we go through that. Um, again, commissioning and testing will be ongoing. Uh, as you will see around the courthouse, because you don't see a lot of the activities that are actually happening inside the building, um, you'll start seeing more of the site work and landscaping come into play over the next uh, several months. Uh, with that being said, if you all ever wish uh, to visit the site, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, the site is fully conditioned, so just the heat is on the outside, so once you get inside the building, it's a, it's a little bit more pleasant. Um, with regards to HDR and their progress, uh, they're continuing to work on the mechanical roof screen design options to present uh, back to this group. Um, they've also are completing their pandemic preparedness uh, rough uh, their pandemic preparedness plan with their rough order magnitude pricing uh, of that plan. Uh, so that'll be complete by end of this month. Um, and then they are also working on their phase two finalizing their or they're working through their uh, the demo and site design plans. Um, we also have put together, uh, worked with them to put together their kind of punch list uh, coordination and their substantial completion coordination list. Uh, last uh, but not least, we have um, uh, Terracon is, uh, had submitted a microbial assessment report um, and Morganti is working through uh, addressing all those issues that were uh, put, put forth. Uh, when Morganti is ready, uh, Terracon is going to be asked to come back out and reassess to make sure that all of those problem areas were or in fact taken care of. Do you have a timeline for that, Mr. Garcia? We're probably looking at early August. This year, okay. this year is when we would see that happen. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Uh, so future key activities, um, the building is you know, almost completely 100% dried in. Um, the, like I said, we'll be we continuing with the roofing system testing and final curtain wall testing will be occurring uh, in early August. So we'll have the, that group out here. Uh, last but not least, um, uh, Suman uh, is joining our team on the construction management side. Um, Suman, if you'd like to. Yep. Uh, my name is Suman Sinai, and I'll be uh, helping the project with the, uh, with the duration of the, uh, um, the completion of this project. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, you can come to me. I'll be more than happy to assist with anything, and uh, I would be more than happy to meet with each and every one of you individually if necessary and answer any questions that you like. Uh, for my past and what I bring to the game and so on and so forth. But then uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, uh, looking forward to finishing this project for you guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If there are any questions. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Judge Commissioners, I'm going to ask to go to closed session and then we'll come back out and wrap up the agenda. Pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code under Section 551.071.0. 7-2, we'll be going to second, work, actually point zero eight seven. we'll be going to closed session to discuss those items. Any action items to be taken will be taken in open session when we return. I have a motion to go to motion closed session. Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, we're back from a from uh, executive session. We do have some action items to take. Sir, thank you, Judge, Judge Commissioners. Item 31A under open session, real estate acquisition appropriation for same. No action to be taken this week. 31B, pending and or potential litigation, there's no action to be taken. 31C, discussion, consideration, possible action regarding response to public health emergency. I will refer back to a uh, prior agenda item. Uh, 31D, deliberation regarding the following economic development negotiations. 
pursuant to Chapter 551, Texas Government Code Section 551.087, Project Polar, Be Polar Bear, Judge Commissioners, uh, we will proceed as directed as discussed in closed session. Item 31E, Civil Action Number 121CV546, Te uh, Texas State LULAC Vot uh, Voto Latino versus Bruce Elfin et al. Judge Commissioners, uh, for the record, uh, I would like the court to take action uh, signing the defense to Ms. Josephine Ramirez's office at DA Civil uh, Division. So moved. No. Second. second. But you don't make it. We have a motion and a second. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. 31F, cause number CL212421J, 21, Diana Alcuna and Juan Acuna versus Juan Benavides and Hidalgo County, Judge Commissioners. For the record, I'd like for the court to take action, assigning this to Ms. Josephine Ramirez's office, DA Civil Division. So moved. Check it. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 31G, CL211426J, 21, Ovidio Garcia Garcia versus Hidalgo County, Judge Commissioners. For the record, I'd like for the court to take action, assigning this to Ms. Josephine Ramirez's office, DA Civil Division. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. 31H, civil action, <coughs> excuse me, civil action number 719CV00153, Viviana Bautista et al. versus Hidalgo County et al. Judge Commissioners, I'd like for the court to enter in a motion in settlement of civil action number 719CV00153, Viviana Bautista et al. versus Hidalgo County et al. in the amount of $5,000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. 31I, <coughs> claim of Idolina Sanchez, Judge Commissioners. I'd like Settlement Authority to make an offer in the amount of $3,500.73. So Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Judge Commissioners, for the record, item 32, there will be no action. There's no need to go back to close. And item 33, there will be no action. No need to come back from a closed session. And I'd like to then go back <coughs> to item 30. Uh, there is no action to be taken today under item 30A and 30B. So, Judge Commissioners, for the record, I'd like to go back to item 28, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding A, County Response to Disaster Health Emergency, One CARES Act, and American Rescue uh, Plan Act funds. There's no action to be taken uh, this week. Item 28B, measures necessary to preserve public health and safety. There's no specific action to be taken this week. Item 28C, <coughs> excuse me. Direction regarding county government operations, including but not limited to essential functions. Judge Commissioners, as we have been doing for quite some time, we continue to follow CDC recommended guidelines with respect to our COVID and our, the pandemic that we're under. Uh, and we continue uh, to work with our facilities management department to address any and all uh, matters uh, dealing with the pandemic and COVID. Again, the health and welfare of our residents doing business with the County of Hidalgo is first and foremost, as is our uh, employees that provide that service. <coughs> Um, Councilor, I do believe I've covered our items and I believe I have covered everything. So with that being said, we do have closed session. Uh, Judge Commissioners, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, I will be uh, working with uh, your offices uh, regarding uh, 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 regarding uh, the schedule for the next commissioner's court. Uh, I do know that a uh, couple commissioners will be out uh, uh, for business purposes. Uh, so, but I will be working with your offices for our next court session. Thank you. Including the workshop? Yes. Rescheduling yes. the workshop. And for the record, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. So it's including the, the workshop. So judge, uh, after adjournment, uh, I'll, I'll make the official announcement on the workshop. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. I have a second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. So, Judge Commissioners, for the record, as a result of the, our lengthy court session under Drainage District and the county, our a scheduled workshop for today uh, will not occur. That has been canceled, and we will work with your offices to provide that information and schedule uh, a uh, rescheduled workshop.